Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. We're coming up with part two of the Everfest spoiler review panel here. Uh, part one is is up to bingo, I believe, and we're doing this chronologically. So if you haven't seen those cards, be sure to check those out. All of the cards will be timestamped for your uh, for your viewing pleasure. And so we're gonna start off here right right off the bat. Because we're all having we're all having a smashing good time with all of these uh, with all of these reviews. With Are we all having these, as, uh, as good a time reviews. as that gremlin in the picture there? He seems to be having a really good time. <laughs> I you know what maybe because it's 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 a good card. Uh, it's a rare uh, zero cost two block non attack action with go again. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the red, uh, the next time an attack action hits a hero this turn, you may destroy an item they control with cost two or less. So if played from arsenal, the next attack action gains plus three for red, plus two for yellow, and plus one for blue. This looks like uh, I a guess Plunderon died for this. Recently banned, Plunderon, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Plunderon died for this. Um, good dash hate, obviously for all non brute classes. Yeah, it just oh, the thing yeah. destroys items. Uh, there are no items that cost more than two, to my to my knowledge. Um, I think they all data, cost two data or less. dolls. I think is a three. I forget if nope. it costs three or not. Is it this, two? There, it's the two? Specializations okay. are two. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So um, then you're right. Yeah. I think a data doll can only banish and get out two costs or less. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Should, okay, yeah. You can only get two or less. They shouldn't give her three costs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so it's good. It's good. Uh, dash. I don't know dash hate, but it's good dash tech for all I, non. It's a generic too. Yeah, I mean that. That Every seems very good it. against dash. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a they're very good card pool counter to like the rising item based builds and the rising kind of like, hey, Just, we've seen some very powerful at this point. Like we're recording this on Friday, we've seen some good items like. Game breaking, I don't know, but we've seen some strong items that I would like to get rid of ASAP. Yeah. I would like to break that data doll specialization as soon mm -hmm. as I can. Um, and so it's very good for the non attack is nice in decks like Briar, Viscera, even Chain, right? Like the non attack actions quite right. good in, in, for some kind of purpose for whatever they're trying to do here. And then in their sideboard, I can see this being fine in Bravo to crush through some more control based dash builds. Uh, you're likely gonna hit, especially with all the new Bravo massive cards. Like you don't need to crush, you just need to hit. Right. And so if that's kind of what you think you're gonna be up against, throwing a couple of these in, even at the blue, you don't really need the plus one. Like you, they all they all kill two costs or less item wise, mm -hmm. right? Um, in reality, you'll probably only be running a list like three of these in your sideboard. You're not gonna be running nine of this. It, it's just not. You don't have that many slots, right? For yeah. just item hate. Um. So. You know, if item-based builds and dash become very super popular in the meta, it's a nice card to have. It's nothing spectacular. It's very targeted. Like, the buff is quite nice for plus three, of course, but still, like, it's yeah. two block, not attack, go again. Uh, we rated it a three out of five. It's an average card. It's teetering on good, but uh, it's too kind of directed to really consider it a notch above to the 3.54 cards. And, and so we just you know, kind of give it and a And once Merchant becomes more of a thing, too, with more potions and more talismans, ah, this could definitely see more play. Well, <laughs> this is only uh yeah. this should say this is only an item they control so it can't hit multiple items you have to pick and choose an item it's they true. control with two or less it's true uh especially good time fun card uh we're rolling into the brute cards rob's my favorite this is why, this is why rob's on the channel guys. these are the so cards i up. get up in the morning for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is why i'm on the channel wow brute cards. uh <laughs> we got we got High Roller. Uh, I like the art a lot on this card, and I can think of all the memes I can put here. It's kind of so, cool. I like, I like how they put Brutes in this, like, carnival setting. It's kind of like everything else. gambling addicts. Yeah, I know. It's like they seem to not fit at all. Like, who would, knew, who would know this, like, barbaric, you know, <laughs> Brute kind of character became, could, could be, like, part of civilization and take part in the Everfest carnival, right? Yeah, <laughs> you see him, like, rolling this... dice or craps. <laughs> Came through the Savage Lands, just wanted to have a good time. It's a very flexible it's a Misunderstood card. Brute, you know? Uh, it's a rare. So it's a Brute Rare, blocks for three. Very, very nice blocks for three. Non-attack with Intimidate, just one Intimidate. If you roll yeah. four, five, six at the red, uh, five, six on the yellow, six on the blue, That's you right. get the double Intimidate instead, instead of the one. So it's not one plus two. Yeah. Uh, keep that in mind. It's just uh, one or two. And I think this might be like a three of... Um, you know, you could potentially run the yellows into, like, the prison matchup. I don't think Brute has that many issues in general against the prison matchup, but you could run the yellows. True. I think yeah. it might be, like, a three a three or six of to go along with, like, Barrage and Beatdown. Uh, yeah. It's not a replacement for it. Beatdown is 
great. I don't think you can take out yeah. nine beatdowns. I think it's just so good. I would say uh, beatdown is probably like a bit better than this card, if not like yeah. no, it's, a it's, moderate it's, amount it is, it is better. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely better, but it might replace something like an Awakening Bellows with the blue slot. Like, right, it's just because there are there blue. are blues and brood that you have to put in because you just need the pitch, um, and you yep. don't necessarily play those cards, right? Like Rec uh, Awakening Bell, like you mentioned, um, the other Bellow, yep. which I keep forgetting its name, but you never play them. They're, there's they're just there to block three and pitch blue, a uh, pitch three. So, like you yep. said, I think High Roller, the ability to intimidate one card for free, um, I think is great. It's a one for one. If you're the one on the offense and you want to make sure that they get hit by barraging, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Just play down your high yeah. roll, isn't you okay? And if you happen to like roll a five or a six or something, and you have the proper one, you just you're just winning even more, right? It's definitely like a win more card in KO because you're already rolling five or six on your attacks. Yeah, uh, you I agree with that. Yeah, you yeah. don't. I don't think you really need the double intimidate like that much in <laughs> KO compared to some of the other classes. But like a blue block three that intimidates is still pretty. Good. Really, like if you're rolling five and six anyway on KO, you cannot lose. It's I like think you you're just swinging. Win. I think for you just win. Yeah. Twelve on a two card hand, like you're just rolling. <laughs> you're just winning. So uh, this card might have some application if um, you know it's a nice kind of backup plan. Like let's say you're rolling your scab skins one turn, and you happen to roll a five or a six, and you have this in your hand. It's like, oh, I won't just pitch it now. I can actually play it to intimidate twice. Um, you won't like uh, roll scab card. skins just for this card, but it's like if you had a plan already that required scab skins and you had it in your mm -hmm. hand, it's like, oh, now I can intimidate for two, and that's amazing. That's basically like you're guaranteeing the effect of barraging beatdown if you uh, if you intimidate a second card that had three block. It's kind of like the three attack becomes like the lack of three block for the opponent, right? So it's kind of it's kind of totally nice agree. yeah yeah yep. I, i'd say it's a nice uh, card I, I i like the idea it's it's kind of a bit less powerful than barraging but i welcome more of these cards um mm -hmm. the other thing too is that it is not a six attack card so you, you do have to be careful with this slot specifically in brute you do want to run a good like if it's cc maybe like 30 six attack cards just to make sure you can consistently get the discard um mm -hmm. but i mean there, there's room to play with this for sure i think there's something you can take out to put this in i agree uh we gave this a three out of five uh average again mm -hmm. teetering on like a barraging beatdown being like a four we gave this this card a three just in, in relative like that's the competitor uh rolling right on get it rolling right on to the next one here <laughs> we got skull crushers our next piece of equipment here is mm -hmm. a brute arm piece which didn't have an arm piece before uh one armor uh, battle worn. So whenever you roll a five or six, your brute attacks gain plus one this turn. When you roll a one, destroy it. Yeah. Uh, doubling down on this roll mechanic here uh, for cards such as like scab skin leathers. An important note: it affects all attacks, including weapon attacks, attack right. actions. It's nice for Reinar. Uh, you can make a five power card, a six power card, trigger intimidate. Uh, so when That's you discard true. it, because it's the plus one is for your entire kind of area, right? So so hand, maybe your, graveyard as well. Yeah, your like blue wrecker romp, I think, is five. There's some there's some other kind blue of blue wrecker uh, romp is a six, there. I think. I don't think Reiner oh. runs any fives to be honest. So there now, isn't anything. But now we can. The problem is though, if you're running fives and then you happen to roll a one on this, all your fives oh, are you useless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't. I don't think do it's a strategy sure. that is that good. Uh, just because no. you know, eventually, if you do roll the one, then your whole deck just goes down the toilet. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, no, it's a cool it's idea though. If you get lucky enough to never roll a one, you can pretty much always have five attack cards in your deck. You can run all those yellows now <laughs> that you didn't no, it's, run it's, before. It's, it's, it's fair. I think it's also like, uh, you know, Levia turns the five power cards in the grave to sixes when you're banishing. Yeah. That's also a thing. Um, you can block up Prism with five power cards that are now six power. That is true. Or your uh, six can become seven when you have to block the War Tune or after, not War Tune. Um, not War Tune. The I other forget one. forget the name. Uh, the whatever it's called. The one, that has to, uh, the one that requires you to block with a seven attack. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Th that, that one. Um, that, the one. It's not. The annoying one. It's not uh, also a, a parable. Uh, the parable aura that makes your attacks minus one. Power oh, that's true. Yeah, block. you can counter that. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, very, very inconsistent. Even for brute, you straight up lose the game if you roll one on scabs. Like you double lose the game now because you don't have gambler's yeah. gloves. So this does take the gambler slot. Lose. Yeah. So I'm thinking this could be nice in a deck where you're rolling scab scabs like every turn, and you're, you don't really care if you roll a one. It's one of those decks that like you're just rolling all the time, uh, where gamblers are less. I would say crucial in that kind of deck. It sounds like more of a meme deck, but I, th I think that in decks where you're rarely rolling scab skins, the gamblers makes more sense because on the turns where you really need to have it, 
rolling the mm. one can just ruin the game for you. But in a, in a game yeah. where you kind of expect to roll ones, you're just rolling every time and just taking advantage of those turns where you have multiple action points and kind of going more in the back foot when you don't, um, it could be fun. I think this has mm. a lot of uh, a lot of room to be fun, in my opinion. I think. I think it's a good like blitz roll dice deck or something like that. It's like you yeah. walk with it soon, you get the one the one armor off of it. Uh, you'll probably want to tailor the whole deck around it, right? So Maybe a lot like of dice OT, rolls. OTK KO. Because you can actually activate this ability multiple times per turn, right? Uh, Skull Crusher. So mm-hmm. roll scab skins, get a plus one. Um, what else can you roll? I mean, you roll KO's ability, obviously. Yeah. So you get another KO plus, gives one. You plus one. Um, there's probably other dice rolls that I'm forgetting. Crazy but... Bird. Roll, yeah, roll a few crazy brews, get plus four. <laughs> and there you go, OTKKO, done. <laughs> Easy. Um, Easy. But yeah. But I think, yeah, it's 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 got potential in KO. We gave it a three. It could be a 3.5 or four with more enablement. There's not that many cards, not that many cards that roll dice a lot, right? Yeah. And so and I don't want to roll, I don't want, most decks roll scabs very, like, It's very safely. safely. With, with gamblers There's no club, deck right? that's good right now that just rolls scabs against every turn. Um, mm-hmm. And also the the drawback of this card to when you roll a one, I think is too strong. Like that drawback is huge. And, and there are certain yeah. cards now that let you re-roll. Uh, I think one came out recently where if you roll twice and then you take the the highest value, uh, the um, KO, the KO specialization. It was the KO one, one right? Another, so yeah, another um, this one, even though you do pick the higher value because you had rolled the lower one, it still counts. So if you roll a one mm-hmm. and a six, the one will still break this item. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway. No, that's fair. Uh, just solidly average. Uh, next card we're rolling into is uh, Specialization, not for Kale, called Spring Tidings for Benji. Benji getting a little Our bit of Our boy love. Benji. <laughs> Across the whole set, honestly. This is just, just a specialization, but he got some other nice toys also. So it's a yellow zero cost Majestic. Blocks three, um, two power, of, co- of course, it's two power. It's Benji, right? Yep, yep. Attack action. When it hits, draw a card for each other attack with two or less base power. You control on the chain, right? Yes. So the Benji skill... Attack actions you control with two or less power can be defended by cards in hand. So it definitely seems more of like a big combo turn where you just have like mm-hmm. a huge combat chain with Breeze Rider boots, which is the one where it gives go again to all ninja attack actions. Oh, sorry. When a ninja attack action hits, it gets your combo cards go again. Right. Uh, could also be like, uh, you, know, you know, utilizing the Flood of Force line, right? Uh, which mm-hmm. is like another one of those lines that wasn't heavily used. And no, one's no one's ever. I have never played that card in my life. <laughs> uh, but but in Benji, it has more applications, especially with the new Ender, which is also a two power card uh, at, at its base, right? So the main issue, the main issue for Benji is always just being armor. Like armor can just block it yeah. out, right? Or de re out of the arsenal. So yeah. I don't think it solves that issue by itself. It does, but it gives maybe... more opportunities because once the yeah. armor is used once, right? It's like okay, now you can go in. So if you're kind of poking with these cards that threaten card draw, you know they can't mm-hmm. block forever. You know, so no. I think um, unless, I think it has. I'll, 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 it's, yeah, it's unless you control place. and then maybe they can. Maybe they can. You're right. Um, maybe you can remove the minus one counters from your armor and keep going. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Uh, so we gave it a 3. So it could possibly be more like a 3.54 with more enablement. However, it doesn't really solve Benji's core issues that we kind of mentioned before. However, it is an auto-include. You, you include two yeah, oh, in oh, yeah. Deck, like, yeah. And so because of like that alone, we can't really give it lower than a 3, right? So yeah. If it's an auto-include, three, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think a 3, uh, you could argue 3.5 on the right decks, of course, but I think a specialization card is so dependent on Benji himself being better than Beaming. what it does yeah. and so that's kind of how we rated that uh coming up with a an arrow that looks like a ballista arrow coming out of nowhere the picture bat, and it's like that's a big arrow <laughs> that, that is that is a bfa it's which a... i'm not going to spell out for everyone because there's a swear word in there so i'm just gonna i call arrow. it a bfa uh a big <laughs> blank arrow and so the application here big fiery arrow got, big fiery arrow thank you very much uh red two costs blocks for three at Six power. Hey, you finally yeah. got a six power arrow. You can finally, that. combat uh, prism now. Done. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Uh, if it hits, it reveals and just uh, they reveal and discard all cards other than action cards, and they lose one health for each card discarded. So it hits reactions in instance. Right? Yeah. Um, it's really good in the prism matchup. Of course, it's a six power. Wasn't really any other option arrow wise for that, right? So it's good synergy with cards like increased attention to make them hold on to defense reactions because increased attention mm-hmm. they can't play them from hand. And so yeah. they'll have nowhere to, nowhere to put them, And wasn't there a bow uh, that recently came out that prevents D-reacts? 
Uh, Wasn't there something that came out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're, jumping, we're jumping ahead of ourselves here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, pitching, pitching a blue for increased attention, coming with zero for like nine. Pretty good card. Good opening arrow for like a wider turn. It's not a great end game arrow. I feel like it's not a not at that level of like Red and Ledger or Remorseless or so yeah. some of the other bigger arrows that you can come up with. Uh, if size into decks that have a lot of reactions, uh, possibly like Dory or something like that, a lot of attack reactions because it hits those two. Yeah. Um, definitely good for control matchups where you're into controls. You can run a pummel for the meme. Nice reveal mechanic. It is too costly. You're right. Yeah. It is too costly. Well, uh, a one for six would be broken. I think but definitely above. We've only seen above that her. in Levy. I think one for six. I don't think we've seen it anywhere uh, else. Illusionist one for seven. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, With the phantasm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Phantasm. Uh, Yikes. So we gave it a we gave it a three average. It's solid. It's a solidly average arrow is what we essentially said. It's a solidly average good arrow overall, but I don't think it's a core. Uh, I don't think it's a must include in my mind for the current ranger builds. Of course, there's a ton of ranger stuff say a ton there's been some ranger cards that have been released that make different builds slightly better or worse depending on what the meta is i think this card has a sideboard slot mm -hmm. i don't see it as an auto include though and so that's why we gave it a three right on now we're coming into some prism goodness fractal replication this this card what a, what a, what a <laughs> the discord card. was on fire after this card came out yeah it's well with good reason it's a zero cost which is already nice red card with with star <laughs> with yeah, a variable nice attack asterisk defense. there yeah as asterisk uh when you play or defend with fractal replication it gains abilities and effects of all illusionist attack actions so not not just light just illusionist because a lot of the ones that came out i mean all the illusionist cards came out right were we haven't seen cards. light yet yeah yeah um on the combat chain the power is equal to the greatest base power among them same with defending it's equal to the greatest uh hmm. the greatest one that was played uh, so now the one, not issue, the one caveat here is yeah. heralds, almost all of them, uh, if if not all of them, almost all of them, go to soul on hit. So it doesn't right. have great synergy because once it goes to soul, I know a lot of people are curious, probably ping in judge chat, see if it remembers that herald was on the chain. Yeah. It does not. It does not. Uh, once your herald goes to soul, you cannot fractal is not going to recognize it they will here. remember so that it was there yeah. yeah if it's if it's popped with phantasm the chain closes so then it's already lost at that point exactly yeah so it does work on heralds if they're fully blocked not not popping phantasm so if you block it with mm -hmm. a d-react and fully block it kind of thing uh it has more synergy with the pure illusionist cards which there are more and more of as we as we blink and yeah. they seem to be floating from the sky here but like mm -hmm. as of now um, they have the base ones from Monarch, the Enigma Chimera, uh, right. Dreamweavers, Phantasmaclasm, Phantasmify. Phantasmaclasm dirty, would be a dirty. nice ability to give this card, I think. Um, just as an oh, additional ability search. to search the hand, take out a six. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Phantasmify, Spears of Surreal uh, Surality, and also any of the new Illusionist cards that already came out that yeah. we'll be talking about, of course. Uh, could have a very good attack line, such as like you pitch a yellow with uh, Herald of Erudition. Uh, yeah. Pitch a, uh, pitch a yellow, herald pitch when they pitch a yellow for it to get to give it the go again off the Monaris. If they pop it, then you pitch again for Enigma Chimera, then one for the boots, the Phantasmal mm -hmm. Footsteps, right? And then you come in with Enigma Chimera. Then you could come in Fractal for like eight. For zero. Because Enigma Chimera comes in uh, eight for zero, exactly. So it's just a zero for eight, right? Because yeah. Chimera, uh, if you don't pop it, right? Assuming they don't pop the Chimera. So like they yeah. used their pop on the herald which you do right if you have it you pop the air edition um mix in a little phantasmify though that's where it gets interesting because <laughs> it makes any attack illusionist so a nice cnc maybe such as a red one buffing so, a cnc for five if this will copy the ability of anything that had phantasmify applied to it so you got it so you pitch for a phantasmify pitch again for cnc cnc for 11 with go get from luminaris because it's now illusionist Followed by a fractal that comes in for another eleven that can't be blocked by D Reacts. That is dirty, dirty stuff. That's Rob. a and fun combo. I love it. It's nice, right? So Phantasmify, your all, all your extended arts, the promos to the moon. Yeah, I've got a nice page, page of them in my binder to the moon. Um, uh, I rated it at a three, and the reason okay. is that on average, I rated it as a three, but it has potential to be a three point five plus in the right deck. Yeah. But I'm looking for it, holistically speaking. Um, it doesn't fit super well into the most prominent Herald builds now that work off like 
mainly Harold, either Harold beat down works off all Heralds or in general, Prism doesn't use a lot of these illusionist attacks like Enigma and Phantasmoclasm very often, Yeah. right? And so because of that, it's not automatically like a slot in. You do have to build your deck around it. But I think it is very, I think the potential for 3.5 higher is actually stronger now that we know more of the cards out, which we'll review a little bit later. That being said, very good card. Very nice artwork. Yeah. Moving along here to Ooh, Pulverize. This is a cool card. I need that on a mat that to go art, the mat. Giving me like All Might vibes from My Hero the, Academia. The, the, like, <laughs> that's true uh, i never punch. thought of it that way <laughs> um so pulverize guardian cost 10 guardian card attack action deals 14 new keyword 14 blocks, <laughs> blocks for three heave yeah. heave ho here so heave, heave three ho. pay three during mm. grand phase you have an empty arsenal slot put pul pulverize in the arsenal brand new keyword very interesting so if it hits first attack during their next turn Minus four. If it hits, not crush. It's not a crush card. Yep. Right. You can do one damage and apply the effect. Yeah, so I think the first thing I thought of immediately here is has good synergy with Awakening on old him and the new Bravo. Mm. Not the old Bravo. Because Awakening's an Earth. Uh, or Elemental Guardian. It's I think an it's elemental. An elemental. Yeah, Elemental Guardian. Yeah, it's, it's Earth Fusion, but it's Elemental Guardian, I believe. I could be wrong there. Uh, it's, not um, integrate, it's not great yeah. into classes that have consistent small attacks, like uh, Kadachis and stuff like that. However, mm -hmm. it's just an overall good card on curve as far as it can enable things like Rouse the Ancients off nothing. It's a one card Rouse trigger. Like when you pitch for Rouse, you only need to reveal this thing and Rouse is online. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, yeah. um, yep. Uh, and Awakening can really get you all the seismic surge tokens that you're going to need to play this thing. Confirming Awakening is Elemental Guardian. So <laughs> Bravo can not play. Uh, definitely a bread and butter card. I expect Bravo to use this, especially the more aggressive Bravo builds. The mm -hmm. old Bravo, the new Bravo, whatever, old him, possibly, in the more aggressive builds to use this card. It's just, uh, I don't know if it's an auto-include, but it's good for everybody. Rated at a 3.5 because of that. Seems like on curve for Bravo. It's a great card. Nothing super crazy. I don't think it's um, like game-breaking or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what's nice is... Yeah, and what's nice is that you do get a discount of three on the next turn because of your seismic surges. If you had used your tectonic plating, you would have a total of four seismic surges, um, which would bring the cost of this card down to six, uh, which is nice for pitching just two blues for it. So, hey, it's like a three-card hand with this thing. That's three cards for 14 damage with a nice on-hit effect. I think that's amazing. <laughs> it's good. It definitely requires a little bit of setup, of course, but cost 10. Of course, it requires setup. Please. Yeah, and what's uh, cool is that, know what doing. it's cool that um, the heave ability also doesn't cost an action point. It's just like, if it's in your hand at the end of your turn, just, you know, put mm -hmm. it down and then, well, obviously pitch for it, put it into your arsenal, get three seismic surges. Um, the yep. three that you're pitching kind of gets invested into the next turn anyway, which is nice. Yep. So you're pitching three, get three yep. seismic surges. I think there might be heave two and heave one eventually, where you have to pitch two or pitch one to get that many seismic surge tokens. But um, if you're not playing it that turn mm -hmm. anyway, it's pretty much... If you're going to arsenal this card anyway, you might as well you know, save some resources and put them into the next turn. So Yep, save, save, save a blue and carry it forward. Yeah. Uh, it is important yeah. to note that it does not work with Crown of Seeds. I, I've seen that mm. comment a couple uh, places. It doesn't work because Crown of Seeds... Uh, this is during the end phase. So Crown of Seeds, there is no priority during... There is no triggers for you to use Crown of Seeds in the end phase. So mm. you can't just like put it in there, gain the heave, Gotcha. Put it to the yeah. bottom, draw a card. So that's right. that's not a thing, in case anyone was curious. You cannot do that. <laughs> um, still a good card, though. So I've got a couple more for the uh, for the rest of the episode. Well, what would you rate this card? Uh, 3.5. Good. 3.5. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing nothing crazy, but it is a good card. Uh, solid bread and butter Bravo. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. This card, this next one, Helm of Sharp Eye, I, I actually flip-flopped a bit based on the ruling that I wasn't really sure of, based on the wording. Uh, I'll explain what I mean in a minute here. So it is armor. Very, very nice cold foil. That definitely a good cold foil to get here. Uh, it is a one armor warrior headpiece with battle worn. As an attack reaction, cost one. Destroy it. Banish the top card, and you can play this combo chain. You can only activate it if you control a weapon with base power greater than twice its base. Mm -hmm. And I will note this is the first time that LSS has put a typo in one of their cards. <laughs> is it's, it actually? It should be ITS, no apostrophe. <laughs> mm. 
Just small tidbit of information there. They put a typo. <laughs> Shame. Rob, Rob just poking at the seams here. Yeah. He's trying to get anything again. Um, uh, so the initial way I thought about this is when they were talking about basic power, the wording on some cards buffs the attack power of the weapon versus the strength. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is like some cards specifically say they are buffing the weapon. Not the attack, not the weapon attack. Other cards are buffing the weapon attack. So I'll give you an mm. example. Okay. Um, uh, automatically, it has synergy with Raiden. Their base of Raiden is zero. It doesn't matter what you do with Raiden. <laughs> Raiden is zero. That was already uh, double. double. Zero, zero. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. yeah. Uh, but as far as like Dory, buffing the Dawnblade, for instance, will need at least two cards to get above the base um of three right because you can't just play a red attack reaction for three it's double it's not above double right right yeah originally dory doesn't have access to a lot of cards that buff the sword itself but she has access to a lot of cards that buff the weapon attack during mm. the, like an attack reaction right okay uh, i did check uh the way this was intended to be used does include weapon attack and just weapon buffs in general okay that's so, good to know uh if the card has on the text that it's buffing the the weapon that's obviously okay if it's buffing the weapon attack via a reaction or something. Yeah. Also okay. That was the intention. Okay. Uh, people were un unsure because it's kind of unplayable if, it's, if it didn't include yeah. also. Yeah. I mean, you'd attacks. have to only rely on like the Dory counters, and then if you have four counters, you're winning already pretty much. But um, mm -hmm. also, I guess you can play like Steel Blade Supremacy that buffs the weapon. I believe not the attacks. Um, mm -hmm. Iron Song Termination. Termination. Yeah. Okay. So. But like, aren't you aren't you already like? killing it if you have both of those cards at once like True. It's, it's very yeah. like <laughs> it's a win more i guess uh, yeah yeah so but now cards like sharp and steel right to buff like the weapon attack um, not the weapon itself attack reaction of some some sort it's not super hard to pull off if you have a token in the blade then mm -hmm. you just need a three power buff because it's it's based on base power not uh adjusted power so if you have a token yeah. on it, it doesn't really matter um so like warrior's valor and then via attack reaction any red attack reaction the card is mm -hmm. random for the card on top but if yeah. you're able to somehow opt or use Stroke of Foresight, that's been a popular kind of card to use to mm -hmm. see what's on top. And if you have something on top that you want to put that you want to get out of this card, that's definitely an option. Uh, or you just get a free opt one, right? I think that is like, it could be better if you combo it with something like that. Uh, as far as yeah. Bolton goes, he has a lot of ways to buff the power. Uh, his hero power buffs it. It gives plus one if they block with an attack action kind of thing. Uh, charging, stuff like that, as well as buff via reaction like Courageous Steel Hand. Uh, yeah. There might be issues with having enough resources to play Dory, though, since yeah, you have to pay Dory's for the equipment on pretty top. pretty limited, yeah. Um, what is nice, though, is that the card that you do banish, it doesn't really matter what it is, you can still play it. Like, it doesn't have to be an attack action card or attack reaction. It, mm -hmm. can, be, it can be anything. So it can be your Steel Blade Supremacy if you want. Uh, the problem mm -hmm. is that you do have to play it this turn, I believe, right? This combat chain. So... Uh, it's the combat chain actually, so you can't even like break the chain and then play the card. You have to play it that chain. So, I guess yeah, it's a bit yeah, limited you, there. You, yeah, you, you you would play the card and break the chain, like a non-attack action or exactly. Action or yeah, whatever. exactly. You, you would be breaking the chain. So if right. they if they block with equipment or whatever, you don't have a choice. They get their equipment back. Something right. Like that. Um, right. So that's yeah, the kind of Dory way. Um, so there might be issues. It seems better if you can get like go again off your weapon and then come come at it with some sort of attack action off the top, like a Bolt of Courage yeah. or a Golfing Light that lets you charge more cards or an attack action would go again to go wider. Um, more targets in that sort of deck, like a Bolton deck. Um, just make sure you don't break the chain after you swing with a weapon. A Hatchet Bolton is possible because cards like Spill Blood. I know everyone forgot that was a Majestic in Monarch. Uh, Spill yeah, Blood. Yeah. Uh, that increases the power of the hatches directly The hatchets by two. specifically, yeah. <laughs> Only the yeah, hatchets. So <laughs> yeah. Only the hatchets. Um, by two on the second hatchet swing you use an attack reaction because it was already buffed by three even if you do nothing right so you swing with the hatchet it's buffed use bolton give it go again the second hatchet games plus one from the first hatchet mm -hmm. you're already on plus three right it's already more than double doubled two. more than doubled yep. yeah um so does this helmet and, compete for the slot too heavily in in dory or, or bolton um so, yeah there there is like the only competitor right now in the slot is arcanite skull, skull cap realistically right? speaking yeah. this is the skull cap um yeah. i think bolton can use halo of illumination but usually mm -hmm. skull cap uh which yeah. pro 
potentially prevents three points of physical damage, right? Uh, more than the one from the helm. Ultimately, I think for Dory, it doesn't. It's too hard to pull off, and the effect isn't really worth losing consistent armor from pivoting, because pivoting, like, blocking with your bunch of armor on Dory and then pivoting a turn and keeping tempo is just a lot stronger. Um, for Bolton, I think it's very easy to always have Raiden on. Uh, it's just easier mm. to use effectively, because Raiden is a zero anyways. Yeah, um, so you just right. You just charge. You utilize extra resources, charge soul through another card. Uh, the class already uses tunic, so you can because it costs one, right? The attack reaction just costs tunic one. Tunic counter, yeah, yeah. Just use a tunic counter <clears throat> uh, to draw that resource, but the sheer randomness makes the card a little less appealing in a deck that may not have enough consistent targets. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of Unified Decree, which I really don't <laughs> yeah. like a lot. So, uh, not really sure about Kasai. Mm -hmm. um, you can also kind of use Glisten. In a bolt in a Bolton build, that kind of sounds weird, but Glisten also puts your your plus one, your plus one counters. Uh, red Glisten mm -hmm. up to four, right? To actually uh, help with this, mm. I don't think it's that great. I'm just putting it out there. So I think yeah, for Bolton, I gave option. it a, I gave it a I gave it a three out of five for Dorian Kasai. I gave it a two point five as mm -hmm. an average. Fair uh, enough. Both. Yeah. I don't know. People probably like bigger warrior players might have some comments uh, about this, but for me, that's how I see it. It's nice that it's the only warrior helmet right now, so it only really competes mm -hmm. with the skull cap. So if you want to go a more aggressive route, if you don't care much about the armor, this is pretty much auto include, I think. I agree. Um, going on to a next warrior card here. In the swing. Yeah. Um, so this is zero cost attack reaction, warrior attack reaction, blocks for three. Play it only if you've attacked two or more times with weapons this turn. Uh, red gains plus three, yellow plus two, blue plus one. So this is for hatchets, yeah? Like this I would is say for either both it has to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kasai Sabres, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a solid attack reaction at curve. It's nothing game-breaking. Yeah. I think it's a good option for classes it, to have more reactions. It's, it's like... Yeah, exactly. It does... Um, I would say it doesn't compete strongly with Iron Song Response because Iron Song Response, I feel, is, is just better. Um, and you don't have mm -hmm. to play it if they don't reprise, right? If they don't block. So it's like... Yeah, exactly. Like you, you it's can a guaranteed play it on plus second, three almost. Yeah, on the, on the second swing. Yeah, on the um, on the second swing, another random card <laughs> dealing with a lot with second attacks. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can you can always just gain plus three, just straight up zero for three. It's okay. We give it a three out of five average. It's it's, it's on fine. curve for what it does. You know, zero for three, nice reaction. And if you're constantly hitting twice with the weapon, I think it's pretty much auto include uh, in my opinion. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely in like hatchet sabers, like yeah. you can't run this in Dawn Blade. <laughs> no, man. yeah, not not worth it. Not worth it at all. Not worth. So, right. rolling in this this one was hard. The last card, this here, is the Kraken's last one Aether we have, Vane. yeah, yeah. Kraken's Aether Vein. Uh, this was a bit hard as a wizard. I was a wizard player. I play wizard. Um, mm. <laughs> this is this is a wizard weapon. Two handed staff once per turn, at instant speed, costing three. Deals one arcane to target opposing hero, draw a card for each arcane damage dealt this way. Not in general, just, just with this with way. With this specific um, effect, yeah. I didn't really know how to think about this card initially. I thought it was a little weird. It looks underpowered at first glance, right? You're like, pitch yeah, three for one arcane. I'd rather pitch think one for Crucible. The, <laughs> but, yeah. I think the weirdness came with the current strategies versus the strategy you would employ to use this staff, right? So you can use this on their turn. Yep. Uh, if you do do it on their turn when they don't have the resources or only have a card in hand and no arsenal, you can activate the staff to get it out of their hand or force one damage into a draw. So it can be very annoying to play against. Mm -hmm. Always like chipping away at these ones, right? Because nobody wants to block one arcane, not really. Yeah. Not with a full card. Because um, sure. they don't want to pitch the red because they probably need the red. They don't want to pitch the blue because then you're not really utilizing over, it. So, over pitching, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so one is like that really annoying piece. It seems better for like Icelander. Islander. Mm, Icelander. Islander. Uh, <laughs> who runs a lot of blues and probably probably Icelander builds will have attack actions based on what I've kind of seen like a, a more controlly mid rangey mm. hybrid build. Uh, it doesn't seem good for Kato because Crucible is just better off your bursty turns. Like it's more in line with the Icelander playstyle. Yeah, um, this is more I of think... a slow and steady kind of ability here, right? Where yeah. you kind of want to on their turn ping them for one, refill the card from your hand because you are pitching three for this. So it's kind of like a one for one in that case. Pitch a blue, draw a card. It's a nice cycle card with some chip damage there. Yeah, I think it's also like 
uh, it gives Icelander another resource sink, given the number of blues in hand, uh, mm -hmm. to search for other cards. Because Icelander is going to be very blue heavy just based on her ability, right. uh, getting blues out of the arsenal's instant. Mm -hmm. It's a very similar purpose to like a reoccurring Winter's Bite, right? So mm -hmm. where you're paying to get something out of their hands, because yeah. they probably don't want you to draw, kind of thing. Um, and for them, they're going to lose the card regardless. Right. Um, right. But it's got a lot more upside. The web, this weapon has more upside since you could do it when they have one card left they want an arsenal or a deck that runs a lot of reds in general that doesn't really want to block it. Uh, I can also see potential to work off that arcane hit as something that can be played at instant speed if you've dealt arcane, like a like a, like a rattle bones. It's an instant mm -hmm. if you've dealt arcane that turn. So if there's, <clears throat> there's cards that work around that, oh, if you've done arcane, uh, kind of like a Blazing Aether, right? So for all the arcane dealt for Blazing Aether, uh, right. you can't run Blazing Aether. Icelander, obviously, but <laughs> right, yeah. uh, very, very similar ideas. There's a lot of design room there, and, which I do like. So. Yeah, and this this opens the door also to effects that could buff the arcane damage from this weapon as well. Uh, I don't know if any exists it exists currently not, not, uh, not for there. weapons. No, so but eventually, if there was something that could buff this by one or two arcane, that's drawing three cards if it all hits. So that's that's quite mm -hmm. good. Um, so if anything comes up I that agree. buffs, I think this has a real a real place in in, in wizard for sure. Yeah, we gave this a 3.5 for Icelander, mainly 3.5 good for Icelander, incorporating future interactions, and it's good for a different play style, because it's very, very hard to dissociate that with, like, current Kano builds. We gave it a 1 for Kano. Yeah. Just, it's, it's not When you've for played Kano. Kano so much, it's really hard to think of anything else that Wizard could be yeah, doing. <laughs> right. That's like, we, we thought of Kano as being the Wizard for so long, it's hard to understand that this is probably one. not for Kano, yeah? Yeah. So I think for Icelander, it's a good card. Like, it's a very good card for Icelander because it's a different kind of play style. It's not like you're not really looking to like big burst. Yeah, you're not a combo uh, deck. You're pretty much going to be slow, slow rolling it. Yep. Uh, so that was everything for part two here of our Everfest spoiler review. Hopefully, everybody is having a good time watching us dissect these cards a little bit more. Maybe gaining something, getting a little tidbit of knowledge you didn't know about these cards before. That's that's really the main goal we're trying to look for. Is if you could take away one thing you didn't know before from any of these cards, I think we've kind of done our job as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. As content creators, bringing these spoilers front and center. Appreciate everybody watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe if you liked our content. Let us know how we're doing. Any comments? Are our ratings wrong? Are we just crazy? I don't know. Let us let me know. Like we don't know how wrong we are unless you tell us. If you agree with us, same same reason. But maybe you agree for a different reason. Please let us know. Very young, contributing community here. Everyone's trying to help each other out. Help me out. Help Rob out. We need some help sometimes. And so with that, I'll say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. See everybody next time.